Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of One Room Schoolhouse. Today we are highlighting Sergeant William Carney. He was a recipient of the Medal of Honor and looking big picture, people who've received the Medal of Honor, we're talking about people that have been involved in the military and over the course of American history, about 57 million people have been involved with the U.S. military. How many people have received a Medal of Honor? Trivia on the spot. What do you think? If from my calculations, I believe it's about 3,500 total guessing. Wow. Yeah. So you did not read ahead at all in the story that we have on wallbuilders.com <laughs> website. I, this is just from your own calculation. That's exactly. brilliant. So, so yes. you probably could even name all 3,500. I absolutely could, but I'd rather show you my math skills by telling you that accounts for 0.000614% of all those in the military. Okay. It's really impressive, Danielle. I, I, we're going to give him credit, even though we looked that up earlier. Okay. The point is that when you are someone who received the Congressional Medal of Honor, this, this is not something that's awarded lightly, uh, although I'm going to ask a question that's not on the sheet, so we're going to see how he does now. Uh, how many people have been awarded the Medal of Honor twice? I times. win. We'll keep going. <laughs> uh, I think it actually was like 18. Well, either way, we'll keep going. Uh, you can fact check me. It might be like 20 or 22. It's somewhere around that number. The reality is this is a very significant honor, and it's something that you had to have been a major contributor. It's shown incredible courage, heroism somewhere along the way. We can point back to some, some pretty fun stories that have been told in more recent generations about heroes from World War I or World War II that we would recognize the names of people that have received a Congressional Medal of Honor. William Carney is someone whose name should absolutely be remembered and recognized in the same idea of these heroes of American history. Now, to back up in his story, he was born, like many individuals we've talked about to this point, in slavery in Virginia. His father escaped on the Underground Railroad. His father was able to raise money, purchase the freedom of the family. They came and joined him, and he actually began studying for the Christian ministry. When the Civil War unfolds, life changed for a lot of people. When Abraham Lincoln did the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863, he was one of the individuals who decides he wants to be part of the movement. He signed up and became part of Morgan's Guards, which later became Company C, was part of the Mass 54th. And we have a lot of really cool things related to American history in the Wall Brothers Collection. One of them, this is a actual crutch from a soldier in the Mass 54th. Up top, it shows Private C.H. Goff, Company H, 54th Mass Volunteer Infantry, carved onto the wood. It says, we fought for the Union and died for liberty. On the other side, it says, long live the 54th Mass Volunteer Infantry and may the Union prevail. These are things literally from some of these heroes from the Mass 54th. Well, he was part of the Mass 54th, and the Mass 54th also, there was a movie, I, I want to say, it was 1989 that the movie Glory came out, had some noted Hollywood hero stars, actors in it, but it was really depicting the story of Sergeant William Carney. Sergeant William Carney, as the Civil War unfolds, came to notoriety really because of a major fight that kind of happened underway that allowed him to show his courage, bravery, and really just toughness mm -hmm. in the midst of being shot multiple times. Yeah, absolutely a story of sheer grit and courage. So they would have white officers leading the black troops, and that was because the white officers had battle experience, whereas the black troops, the members of the troops, had not gained that experience yet. That does change later in the war. So do either one of you know the leader of, of the Massachusetts? Well, if we were confused, it is on the cheat sheet. But yes, it, it was Colonel Robert Shaw. And, and even it's kind of interesting as we talk about some of the white officers who would lead some of these black troops because Colonel Shaw was, he was in his early 20s. Mm -hmm. Like this is not a really old experienced dude, except he'd been wounded, he'd been shot, he'd been in multiple battles. And if you're with people who've never been in any battle, and you've been in multiple battles, well, all of a sudden, then you have a lot of battlefield experience that is helpful in helping get people ready to know what's it going to be like when we have to step on a battlefield. What's it like when you're under fire and you hear bullets whizzing over your head? What, what do we need to do and navigate that? So having someone who's had battlefield experience does make a difference. Even as you noted, Danielle, there, there were 
in even in this point in American history, there's been many moments of having some courageous, heroic black leaders in the military. We can go back to the American Revolution. But even we could talk about in the Navy that there was a the American fleet, the American Navy was off the coast of Africa. We actually were working with England, Great Britain to stop the slave trade coming out of Africa. So you did have some some noted military people, naval vessels at that point that had some incredible black leaders. However, when we're talking about a land battle, this was something very different. And since Lincoln had only just recently Mm -hmm. said, hey, and maybe even arguably under some pressure from leaders like a Frederick Douglass or Henry Highland Garnett saying, hey, uh, just kind of reality check. You have a bunch of people who would love to fight for freedom, to fight to preserve the union, include them in the process. Mm -hmm. But now they're they're joining into a war that's already going on. They don't have a lot of battlefield experience. So this wasn't necessarily a racist thought. It was, we need people with experience to lead people without experience. But Colonel Robert Shaw was the officer put over the Mass 54th. Right, and I just want to say, to put it in perspective, he volunteered, white officers volunteered for that position, and Robert Shaw specifically was the son of an abolitionist. Yeah, the fact that when your family is a noted family of fighting for freedom, fighting against slavery, and then you volunteer for the position, it it does put you in a different light and category sometimes than maybe what a depiction would be today uh, or the way it could be portrayed today by people that are pro-1619 project, pro-critical race theory. Nonetheless, Colonel Robert Shaw is the one who leads them. And and still, we're building up to how did William Carney become noted? What, What happened in the battle that led to him First of all, as I alluded to, being shot multiple times and and then him being the hero on some level. All right, somebody walk me through this. What happens? Okay, so the 54th finally get to this narrow part of land, which is only a half a mile long and 60 yards wide. So very narrow. So they're sitting there waiting for orders to attack Fort Wagner, which is a Confederate fort. So while they're waiting for orders, the Union ships are coming up and they're 300 yards outside of this fort and they're just bombarding just for eight straight days or hours, multiple choice question. (laughs) I'm gonna say hours, although I mean days, you know, give or take, (laughs) Uh, but yes, so so for hours on end, right? Because I've thought about this too, is if you're bombing for eight straight hours, If you're on the ship and you have to keep loading the cannon right. for mm-hmm. eight hours, and, and how how many cannonballs do you have to have, right? How many of these mortar shells, these bombs bursting in air? Like, this is a massive undertaking. And are you having to, like, swap out ships in the fleet? All right, we're at running low. Somebody, mm-hmm. But for eight hours, eight hours they're bombing this fort. So they're waiting there while they're being bombarded for eight straight hours. And the point of it was to weaken the defenses of this fort. So as they're waiting on this thin, narrow strip of land, while it's being bombarded for eight straight hours uh, to weaken the defenses of this Confederate fort, once the Mass 54th finally get their orders, they run to the fort uh, with loaded rifles, rifles, fixed bayonets. Mm -hmm. They're going to take on this fort. Problem is, after eight hours of bombing, apparently the Confederates weren't like totally dumb. Apparently there level. was bomb-proof shelters. And they're like, hey guys, let's just, right, let's just mm-hmm. make some shelters. They bomb us. Let's get underneath the shelter. We're fine. But if you're in the Union side and you're bombing, you're like, hey, they haven't shot back for hours. I think we got them, guys. No, they were in their bomb shelter. Right. So they storm the fort and the Confederates come out of the bomb shelters and just start leveling the field. Heavy fire. So the person in charge of carrying the U.S. flag at this point, his name was John Wall. And so he's carrying it and gets shot and starts falling. So Carney was running next to him and grabbed, he dropped his rifle and grabbed the flag before it could hit the ground. At this point, he's shot in the leg, keeps running. And let, me, let me pause for a second, because as someone who does enjoy firearms, <laughs> I'm thinking, like, why don't you hold the flag and your gun, right? Like, it's, but it does give a little credence to the what he thought was the most significant thing. And and really, flags back then, they were more than just like, oh, it's pretty colors, because you would often follow flags in a battle, and and it could give direction of this company. Because he didn't just grab the American flag, although he grabbed the American flag, he grabbed also the company flag, Mm -hmm. and so they're supposed to help the company know where they're going and what they're going to do. So he knew if we drop this flag, they don't know where we're leading, and so it was a huge deal. But as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. If you pick up the flags, he got shot. Why? Because everybody knows. Shoot the guy with the flag, and then they lose direction. It's easier to, right, 
kind of maybe wipe them out at that point. So Carney gets the flags, holds them up, makes himself instantly a target of fire, and pretty instantly does get shot. So he gets shot in the leg, heavy fires coming from the Confederate camp, and Colonel Shaw, the leader of the troop, gets shot, right? So they're just being attacked, and so they decide to leave. And so they start heading back down the embankment. So Carney takes the flag, wraps it around its staff, and heads down with them, right? So then he's going through, th I mean, this story is gets so, I mean, this guy is so resilient. He goes through water, chest high, wading through, holding the flag up so it doesn't get wet. And he's coming up out of the water, gets shot in the chest, keeps going, gets shot in the leg again, and then, any, is anyone gonna come to his help? Well, first of all, he's like, guys, I'm good. It's only a couple of shots. I'm fine. Because there were times people came to him right. and they're like, hey, let me have the flag. And he said, no. Yeah, specifically uh, a man from New York, right? A white man from New York. Uh -huh. He said, hey, let me help carry the flag. And he said, no, I, I, as a black warrior, as a black soldier, this is, this is a privilege for me, and this is important to me. And the reason I think, probably a couple factors, but the reason I think it was so important is there was a lot of questions yeah. from people about could, could a black man serve as courageously, as honorably as a white man? And the reason there were questions is because this was part of like this Darwinian racist evolution kind of talk that was being espoused on some level right. that we're not really sure that the, the black man can equal the white man. And so there was talk on the battlefield, which is also worth noting, the Mass 54th drilled more probably than any other, any other company, any other unit in the entire yeah. Civil War because, and Colonel Shaw rightly knew, they had to be able to show their courage, their discipline, because they were going to be the model that everybody was going to look to. And, and they did not want people to be able to point to Mass 54th and say, see, that's why we shouldn't have black soldiers in the military. He wanted this to be something that everybody would look to and go, we need more black soldiers because they are the very best ones there are. So as he's getting shot, Carney's... So just to recap, so far, he's been shot in the leg once shot in the chest, shot in the leg again, was asked if he needed help. He said, no, thank you. Right, like, I got it. Then shot in the, scraped his head. Yeah, sh hit, hit his skull, <laughs> right? And it, and it says it tore a gash open in his skull. And, and, and I think it's also pertinent to mention that what caliber bullets are flying at this man? We're not talking about two, two, three, five, five, six that exists today, right? We're talking about 30, 40, 50 caliber projectiles coming out of these rifles heading towards this man. I mean, ripping off chunks of flesh at that point Huge. from how large these bullets are. Right. He sustains four of those gunshots yet prevails in reaching uh, back to base camp and bringing the unit flag back yeah, home. When he finally gets back, he is exhausted. He sits down, kind of falls from exhaustion, and significantly, famously, he says, boys, the colors never touch the ground. Right. right? He did his duty. Even when the medical staff was tending to his wounds, he still held on to that flag. I mean, th th genuinely, this is, this is grit on a different level, and, and there's a lot of military people we could point to, and even some of the modern era. We, we, we look at guys like whether it be a Chris Kyle, whether it be uh, a Marcus Luttrell, we can point to some of these more modern guys and go, man, these people were so heroic and courageous. That's what many American soldiers have done literally for decades, hundreds of years. We've had heroes all along the way that showed strength and courage and honor and dignity, grit on amazing levels to get shot four times, never let the flag touch the ground. And also backing up to the point that it was so important to him, mm -hmm. the flag he was fighting for, because the modern mantra today is the American flag is racist, mm -hmm. right? It's oppression, it's evil, it's all these things. For them, they recognized what the American flag actually represented. Absolutely, they knew that the American flag represented that freedom and liberty for all, even though imperfect, they were fighting for the opportunity for their posterity to one day enjoy the freedoms that they themselves were not experiencing in that moment. And what I love is after, uh, well, throughout the war, especially hearing of the bravery of the Mass 54th, enlistments raised 
over 200,000 black Americans accounted for 10% of the entire Union force. Even afterwards, because of their bravery, Congress even decided to equalize pay for black and white troops because they saw, just as you were referring to earlier, Tim, that black soldiers were capable of being just as brave, just as courageous, and have just the same amount of fidelity to the cause as white soldiers. So the equalized pay across the board really bringing up the idea that black soldiers are just like any other. Now, when did he receive his Medal of Honor? He received his Medal of Honor 37 years later. It was like a, a, a little bit of a long time waiting. Who, who gave him that Medal of Honor? Republican President Teddy Roosevelt. And actually, Roosevelt looked and saw several of these incredible black heroes that had not received the proper recognition for the contributions they made. And, and certainly, there were people who recognized that, that knew the story. The reason Teddy Roosevelt knew who to honor was because these were known stories on some level. But when you have Abraham Lincoln assassinated and then you have a lot of change and a lot going on, it took a while before Teddy Roosevelt finally was the one to say, guys, we have to give them recognition for what they contributed. This is one of the reasons that we actually know Sergeant William Carney's story so well. With that being said, he's one of many heroes today that we should know the story. We, we should celebrate and honor the contributions he made. There's way more to the story. We don't have time to get into all the details as always. We're giving the very abbreviated summation of this. For more information, go to wallbuilders.com. You can find these bios, there's footnotes in them, and there's way more on the website, links to all kinds of incredible black heroes of American history. And if you wanna find out more, just tune in next time to One Room Schoolhouse.